Association rule mining is one of those bread and butter tools that has found widespread use in machine learning, artificial intelligence, etc. Now, in business analytics, we typically refer to it as market basket analysis because it's typically applied to studying customer transactions, trying to figure out what items customers would be interested in purchasing, all based on what items appear in people's shopping carts. And we're pretty familiar with this line of analysis. We're pretty familiar with seeing the results of the analysis. If we head on over to Amazon and search for an item that we find interesting, like maybe some Frenchy socks, and we click on an item, it's going to do its best to come up with a list of items that, based on what we're looking at right now, might seem interesting to us. And indeed, inspired by the recent shopping trends that I've looked at, we got some other Frenchie socks, which look great. A hair scrunchie, not really going to do much with that. Frenchie pillow, <laughs> adorable Frenchie mug. Yeah, you know, sign me up. I'm very interested for this. And so Amazon knows what they're doing. I mean... I got my Frenchie sock that we're looking at on the screen right now. I might have another pair of Frenchie socks as well. And, you know, if you go around my house, there's really no shortage of Frenchie related items. So how does Amazon actually know what items I would be interested in purchasing? You know, Amazon doesn't know immediately that I have two Frenchies and that I'm very interested in Frenchie merchandise. So what is it about these socks that we suggest these other items? Is it because there's a Frenchie on them? Is it because it's a color? Is it because they're socks or just clothing? And so that's what we want to study here in this unit is market basket analysis. What combinations of items tend to appear more frequently than they should if shoppers were purchasing items at chance? And how, we, how can we use those items to increase sales or to better design store layouts? So with Amazon, it's not just suggesting socks here. We got a plush animal. We have a cute little sign. All of these I would be interested in. So where did these suggestions come from? And what else can we actually apply these to? So not only grocery stores use this line of analysis, but you're used to receiving recommendations on Netflix or any sort of streaming service. You go watch some sort of show, and they're going to make a set of suggestions for similar shows that other viewers liked. There must have been some sort of analytics going on behind the scenes that looked at combinations of shows that people tend to like in tandem. So Netflix, Amazon, grocery stores, there's really no shortage of companies who would be interested in looking at the results of this sort of analysis. Based on a user's transactional history, well, what other items are they going to be interested in? What else can we sell those customers? And in fact, I think one of my favorite real-world examples of this is dealing with hurricanes. It's hurricane season right now. Luckily, there's no hurricanes that are forecast to crash down on the United States right now. In previous years, that always seemed to be the trend. It was a weird coincidence. Uh, but Walmart is well known for doing analytics with its shoppers' transactional histories. And they actually use market basket analysis with a kind of surprising twist at the end. So back in 2004, a series of hurricanes crashed into Florida, and Walmart decided to do some analytics on the customer's transaction histories to see what items people tended to purchase together in order to help prepare themselves for the incoming disaster. And what's kind of crazy is that they found that one particular item increased in sales by a factor of seven over normal shopping days. And in fact, it was discovered by looking to see what items were typically purchased together when people were purchasing beer, obviously clearly a staple if you're going to prepare for a disaster. And it wasn't something obvious. It wasn't something like bottled water or batteries, flashlights, generators, etc. The answer truly is shocking. So what was this product? Well, surprise, surprise, it turned out to be strawberry Pop-Tarts. Now, in retrospect, it's not all that surprising. Uh, Pop-Tarts don't require any refrigeration or cooking. They're individually wrapped. They have long shelf life. Kids love them. Everyone loves them. And so it makes sense that people would purchase a lot of strawberry Pop-Tarts. But this wasn't known ahead of time until they did this sort of market basket analysis and looked to see, well, what other items are being purchased together with these commonly known staples like water, like beer, like batteries. 
And so what did Walmart do with this information? Well, the next time that a series of hurricanes were forecast to crash into Florida, they made sure that all of the Walmarts down there were well stocked with strawberry Pop-Tarts. And sure enough, they ended up selling out of every single one of them. So it's a win-win for everybody involved. It's a win for the customers because they're getting the items that they would like. It's a win for Walmart because they're able to increase sales and you know, goodwill is kind of increased overall. And actually speaking of hurricanes, there's been other applications of market basket analysis that extend well beyond just studying transactional behavior. And I think one of my favorite examples is using market basket analysis to come up with a better hurricane forecasting model than even the National Weather Service had at the time. So how did this proceed? Well, they treated each hurricane like a shopping cart and the characteristics of those hurricanes as like items in the cart. So initial wind speed, the direction, those are like having Pop-Tarts in your cart or not, beer in your cart or not, if the wind speed exceeded a certain threshold or not, etc. And then what they did is they looked to see, well, what combinations of characteristics tended to appear together and what combinations were associated with a particularly severe hurricane. Kind of like if we see, all right, uh, bottled water, batteries, and beer, what else might be in the cart? Strawberry Pop-Tarts. And by doing this sort of analytics, by looking to see what combinations were associated with a particularly severe hurricane, this person that was uh, developing this strategy actually came up with a better hurricane forecasting model than what was available at the time. They were able to predict hurricane intensification and its ultimate strength better than anything else that existed. So and we'll see this by the end of this unit. We can actually use market basket analysis for a variety of tasks, not just looking to see what items tend to be purchased together in shopping carts to increase sales overall at the company. This is actually a very worthwhile skill to add to your analytics toolbox. So where else could this be uh, applied? Well, I think what has a lot of potential now and in the future is aiding with medical diagnoses. So kind of like with the hurricane intensification example, what if we treated each individual as a shopping cart and the presence or absence of various symptoms as items in their cart, like having bananas or not, having apples or not? Well, if we can find combinations of symptoms that typically go together and that are associated with a particular disease or a particular ailment, well, we might be able to increase the ability of diagnostic tools to correctly figure out what a patient actually has. And so there's really no shortage of applications for this market basket analysis, better known just in machine learning or artificial intelligence as association rule mining. And so we want to look to see where is it applied in business analytics and what else can we squeeze out of this analysis. So if we go back to the original problem, someone goes on to Amazon.com, they look for Frenchie socks, what other items should be suggested to this individual? So if we do a market basket analysis and we find out that, okay, if someone has Frenchie socks and say a Frenchie stuffed animal in their browsing history, maybe those are items A and B, then they tend to also add Frenchie t-shirts to their shopping carts. What do we actually do with those sorts of rules? What if we find a rule like if a shopper purchases items A and B, then it's relatively likely that they're also going to purchase item C. Well, here are a few strategies. So let's imagine that we have discovered the rule, if a shopper purchases A and B, then they also purchase C, and maybe C is a new item, what can we do with that? Well, we can introduce item C to the shoppers that would actually be interested in that item by scouring the transactional database, looking at those shoppers that have already purchased items A and B, but who haven't purchased item C yet, and maybe send them a promotion, or at least some sort of flyer that makes them aware of that product. Other shoppers tend to have those three items go together in their purchases, so let's introduce those shoppers that are missing out on item C to its existence. Another thing that you can do is you can forward this along to advertising and marketing to make sure that promotions on items are being designed correctly. If you know that people are purchasing items A, B, and C together, well, it would be a waste of money to discount more than one item in that trio. 
So if we knew of the existence of rules, like if they're purchasing A, B, then C, or any permutation of that, then we could use that to make sure that only one of those items in the set was discounted at any particular time. And it can be used to liquidate inventory as well. If we know that shoppers that purchase A, B often also purchase C, and we just want to get rid of item C, well, we can send out to these purchasers of item A and B a special coupon, maybe a really deeply discounted coupon that allows those shoppers to pick up item C, we know they're interested in them, and therefore liquidate that inventory. And there are a few other applications as well. So if we happen to know that items A and B are commonly purchased together, we can design store layout more effectively. So I don't know about you, but oftentimes if I go to the grocery store, I have a list in my mind of what I need to pick up. And do I actually end up picking up everything on that list by the end of the shopping trip? Well, probably not. I'm going to forget an item or two. And so if we know that pairs of items tend to be purchased together, well, we can make sure that those items appear close together on the shelves. That way we don't give the shopper an opportunity to forget one of those two items. Or what we can do is actually use these market basket analysis rules to come up with new product ideas as well. So one thing they would discover if they scoured my transactional history is that the appearance of this particular Campbell soup is often going to be found with the appearance of sriracha sauce. What do I do for lunch? Well, <laughs> no kidding, two or three days a week, I'm going to heat up this soup, I'm going to put the sriracha in it, and I'm going to enjoy a very delicious meal. It's amazing, and I've been having this meal probably two or three uh, days a week for a good decade or so. So what could the good people at Campbell's Chunky Soup do? Well, if this was a thing, if other people realized that this was a great combination, they could come out with a new flavor, you know, chicken and sausage gumbo with sriracha infusion in there already. I would buy the heck out of that, and I bet you would love it too, especially if you like spicy foods. So there's a lot of applications out there for market basket analysis. Let's learn how this proceeds. So overall, here's the statement of the problem. We know that all stores sell a vast amount of items, and what we'd like to do is go through the transactional history and find pairs of items that are purchased together, you know, the soup and the sriracha, or maybe combinations of items that have more than two items being purchased together, like two kinds of Frenchie socks and a Frenchie t-shirt. In general, we just want to find combinations of arbitrary size that are appearing in shopping carts more often than what chance alone could explain if shoppers were just picking items at random, because we want to use the results of this analysis to better design promotions, to upsell items to customers, to suggest new items to customers as well. The issue, though, is that this is a pretty big problem. If a store carried, say, 10,000 unique different products, if we were to figure out, well, how many pairs of products would we have to analyze, going through the transactional history and counting up how many times these pairs appeared in previous transactions, well, the answer would be quite a bit. 10,000 choose two works out to be a little bit under 50 million pairs that we'd have to analyze. That's going to be a slow process. And if we wanted to do something more sophisticated, look at, say, item sets of size three, combinations of three items, well, 100 choose 3 is even bigger, a little bit higher than 166 million. And it just gets bigger and bigger from there. If we want to go to uh, items of size 4, it's going to be bigger. Size 5, bigger, bigger, bigger. In fact, in general, if you ran in our choose 10,000 comma K, where K is the number of items in that combination, you can see just how egregiously large the number of possible combinations get. So we're going to have to find a shortcut for doing this sort of analysis here, this analytics. Luckily, there is an algorithm called the a priori algorithm that will do this analysis for us very quickly. And it's going to be up to us, really as business analytics practitioners, to interpret the results. So the good news is we're not going to have to do most of this programming. We're not going to have to write for loops that go through every possible uh, combination and scan through the data set. That's going to be done for us. We just want to make sure that we can interpret the output of these rules and identify where the opportunities are. So let's introduce just a little bit of notation before we dive into doing a market basket analysis for a grocery store. How are we going to talk about these rules that are being discovered? 
So here's some shorthand. What we're going to do is we're going to try to discover rules of the following form. Basically, if we discover that a shopper has items x1, x2, x3, let's say all the way up to xn in their cart, then chances are they're going to be interested in one particular item y. We're going to stick to just suggesting one item at a time. And so we're going to abbreviate this rule the following way. We'll kind of wrap inside the curly brackets all of the items in that combination, the x1 through x2 through xn. So this might be apples, bananas, cauliflowers, etc. And the item that it's suggesting is going to go to the right hand side of the arrow. We're going to suggest maybe pears or whatever item tends to be purchased along with that combination. So fundamentally, when we talk about these rules that are being discovered, fundamentally this rule is going to be about the item that appears to the right-hand side of the arrow, that single item, which we're referring to as Y on this slide. And it's going to tell us the probability of finding that item in a cart that contains the items to the left-hand side of the arrow, all of those X's. So we might know something like 1% of all shopping carts have bananas in them, but if we know that a cart has apples, pears, and cauliflower, maybe that probability goes up by a factor of 10 from 1% up to 10%. So we want to find rules that look like this, and we want, to, we want to be able to talk about the implications of those rules. All right, so what are some of the numbers, some of these key words that we'll be using to discuss these rules? Well, here they are. So if we have the rule, if a shopper has items X1, X2 through Xn, this combination of items in their cart, then they may also have item Y. What do we talk about in regards to that rule? Well, one number that we talk about is the support of that rule. Basically, how applicable is that rule with the transactional data set that we're working from. What fraction of carts have items that contain all of those items referenced in that set, all the X's and Y? So essentially, how prevalent is this rule? How many carts have this rule being satisfied? If the rule is just too rare, if it doesn't apply to that many carts, we're just not really going to care about it. Now, the coverage of a rule is a related concept. The coverage is just the fraction of those cards that have all items to the left-hand side of the arrow, basically the if part of the rule, all of the, the Xs. So we're going to look for rules with a fairly large support or a fairly large coverage so that they're widely applicable. They're going to apply to a large fraction of shoppers out there. Too rare, don't care. We're going to look for rules with a large support. Now, when we do discover these rules, we're going to talk about how confident we are in these rules as well. How often do these rules apply? And the confidence is just going to be the probability that a shopper has item Y in their cart, given that they have that combination of items that appear on the left-hand side, that combination of the X's. So the confidence is, you know, given that a cart has those items, what's the probability that it also is going to have item Y? And then finally, and we'll dive into a lot of detail with this uh, uh, word, the lift of a rule is talking about how much the probability of finding item Y increases. So without any knowledge of what's in the cart, item Y might be in 1% of them. But if we know that a particular combination of items are in there, like apples, bananas, and cauliflowers, well, the probability of finding pears might skyrocket up by a factor of 10 to 10% that up by a factor of is going to be called the lift of the rule. How many times more likely are we to find item Y in the cart, given that we have that combination of items already in there that we find on the left-hand side, the X's. So this is better illustrated within the context of a real-world example. So let's actually do a market basket analysis on some grocery store data, grocery stores that are in New Zealand.